Good evening, this is Dr. Erica. I am just double checking, making sure that Facebook isn't telling me stories that we are actually really live. Let's see, let's see if it's gonna act right. I believe it is. I believe we're actually online for real, for real. Okay, so it's nice to know we're, on, we're alive. And online, and it's so funny, I closed that. I don't know why that action made me think of um, Mr. Rogers in his shoes, but um, let's go ahead and get this started. I'm Dr. Erica. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We made it to, let's see, it's hump day today. And yesterday we talked about the seven ways that this psychiatrist made it through all of the season of change. Today I wanted to switch gears up a little bit, and I know sometimes I tell you a little bit about myself, but I figured let's let's do a little bit more quality time. Let me tell you a little bit more about me. And you know, I also oftentimes tell you that I'm a Harvard trained double board psychiatrist, but we don't always talk about the story of how I became a psychiatrist. So I figured tonight would be a really good night to just take a brief moment and talk to you about why I became a psychiatrist. So the first housekeeping tips are number one, can you please tag anyone you feel like needs this? Number two, two, <laughs> please share this with anybody you think needs this. And the third is if you're watching this later, no worries, put hashtag replay in the comments. Let's go ahead and get started because I don't want to hold you up your entire Wednesday night. Oh, thanks, Jay Nice. He says, yes, how did you become a psychiatrist? So again, I'm Dr. Erica, Harvard trained double board certified psychiatrist and integrative lifestyle coach. I am on a mission to help women feel valued, seen, and whole on their own terms, but I'm coming to you today, no matter your gender, just to help you get through this season of change with all of your marbles intact. So that's what I'm here for. So let's go ahead and get started. So the, to the topic tonight, pardon me, I am a tiny, tiny touch tongue-tied tonight, but thanks everybody for coming on. I think I saw, I saw Joy, I saw Dr. Carol, I saw Tara also, and I already had said hello to Jay. So this story goes a little bit something like this. So people that knew me when I was young probably had no idea I'd be a psychiatrist because I'd wanted to be a doctor ever since I was really little, like around three years old. I was a very sick child, had horrible asthma, just tragic allergies, and I was often in the hospital for either pneumonia or my asthma, which my dad actually mentioned when he was on my show about me being in an oxygen tent as a baby. So I went to med school. I was 100% sure I was going to be a pediatrician. You couldn't tell me otherwise. I was going to be a pediatrician. And I got there and the summer before my third year and when I, where I went to school, the first two years are all classwork. It's class, 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 test, test, test. All the time, we didn't spend hardly any time in the hospital. And the summer before my third year, so this is before I spent a lot of time in the hospital, I literally just woke up with this epiphany. I woke up with this epiphany that I was going to be a child psychiatrist. So ironically, it was literally divine intervention. I originally had no reason why, no idea why. I just woke up. God put this idea in my head that I was going to be a child psychiatrist. And yes, Jay, it is tough to find black psychiatrists in Florida. It's tough to find black psychiatrists in a lot of places. There aren't that many of us. Because out of all of the physicians, only 4% are black. And out of psychiatrists, it's a very small number that are black. So it's hard to find us. Um, which is some of the reasons I'm out here so that you know I'm here. So you can find me. And if you're somewhere else, I can help you find somebody else. So I wake up. So I'm going to be a child psychiatrist. So naturally, what comes after that? I got to find reasons. I got to find some data. I need some information because um, I originally, I was a biochemist. <laughs> so that explains my nerd factor. So I had to find some logical reasons, some other reasons other than I just wanted to. And yes, Joy, because you somehow are friends with all of us. So um, Joy says she knows a lot of black doctors. And thanks, Dr. Rhonda, for coming on. So what ended up happening afterwards, and in retrospect, I realized not too long before I had that dream, I had, there had been someone that came in and did a talk. 
And in retrospect, I didn't realize what she actually did, but now after I trained, I realized what she did is she did consult liaison psychiatry. And if I remember correctly, because I graduated from med school 20 something years ago, is that it seemed like she was working, I believe she worked with cancer patients if I remember the most. And when I really thought about it, I'm not that surprised that psychiatry drew me in. And Jay says, having a psychiatrist who understands your specific culture is of the utmost importance, and it is. And um, hi, um, Dr. Kirk, thanks for coming on. And what I realized is that there's a reason why I was called to do this type of work is I love getting to know people. If you know me, I'm a talker. I love to talk to people. I love quality time. Quality time is actually my primary love language. And with psychiatry, you don't end up with a situation where the expectation is you see people for a couple of minutes. You get to really get to know people. So one of the things I love about it is it is, we look at it as it's medicine, um, like you're a doctor and you help people with their thoughts and feelings. But I look at it as it's a spiritual experience to be someone's psychiatrist is spiritual because you are helping them heal their soul. And I love the fact that from what I do, it can have a profound effect on people's quality of life. So it can make people's life tremendously better. So I love the fact that every day I go to work, I know I made a difference. I don't have to question it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think, you know, why am I doing this? Um, I get to know I make a real difference and I really get to know people at their heart and I get to work with people when they're the most vulnerable. So the fact that they trust me to help when they're at the most vulnerable is an honor for me. And I also love that it's never boring. No person is the same. So to me, it's exciting every day, every person getting to see each person. Like I can see 20 people with depression and they're not all the same. So I never get bored. Work is never boring for me. So I love the fact that I get to truly know people and come up with creative solutions. So if you also know, I'm a bit of a creative so my job, I love the fact that there's an art and a science to psychiatry. So those are some of the reasons why I became a psychiatrist. Not to mention, it pays all right, pays the bills. Um, and it's nice doing something that is of service that there's such a high need for. So people need me and I get to be there to help. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Please, if you're interested or there's something you want to say, please put your comments in there. Um, I do think it's important, especially a time like this, we all are noticing the importance of having black psychiatrists because there is a certain amount of energy. If you see someone that doesn't really understand our experience, that you've been trying to explain what it's like being black in America. The upside about me is I understand what it's like to be black in America. I've experienced microaggressions. I've experienced ma macroaggressions. I've lived with that frustration of wondering why your parents told you, you had to be twice as good and seeing what other people get when they are half as good. <laughs> um, I've lived with all of it, you know, and I think by having those experiences, that you get a chance to really connect. And I remember as a trainee, uh, back in the day, for the most part, a lot of trainees, we all went into therapy. And I think it's an excellent experience because it gives an opportunity to see what it's like to feel that vulnerable and be on the other side, but also work out anything that might be going on up in this noggin so that you're in the best position to help people. And I always remember who I saw, a very nice gentleman, he was Caucasian. But I was like a little unicorn. I feel like he spent a large part of my therapy enamored by the fact that I was a black doctor at Harvard. And I think he meant well, but I don't think he was as helpful as he could have been if he had a better understanding of my culture and didn't become distracted by my culture and had not having seen as many of us. So um, I do think there is something to be said to being able to cut through some of that and not either be someone's unicorn or have to explain all of these complex emotions that we all have being black in America. Um, 
And I think there is a special place that people are, that have been significantly underserved or underrepresented or mistreated by this country can understand. And that helps us understand other people's, other people's story. Um, Joy asks, have you ever wondered what would have happened if you'd been a pediatrician? Yes, um, there are numerous points along here that I've wondered what would have happened. So I wondered what would have happened if I'd been a pediatrician. The number one thing is I, I realized when I finally did peds, I loved little babies. Some of the other stuff I was not feeling as much. So I think I'd be frustrated had I been a pediatrician. I think I'd have a, re a pretty regular life. I probably would have just had a private practice, got married, kicked out some kids, had been a soccer mom, and then been frustrated I wasn't paid well. <laughs> I see my life would have been totally different. I, I, I may have left medicine because I became frustrated with it. Who knows? And, you know, I've also wondered what life would have been like had I not trained at Morehouse School of Medicine because I think I'd have a totally different life and different career had I not gone to Morehouse School of Medicine because it was such a nurturing environment. It was so supportive and they encouraged me to do big things. And when I thought of big things, they were right there for all of it. Um, and I think if I hadn't gone to Morehouse School of Medicine, I don't think I would have ended up at Harvard. And hey, Joy loves to say I went to Harvard. So it comes in handy. It was an excellent education. Um, and Joy also said terrible twos are terrible for a reason. Yes. Um, to all the parents out there, I'm sending love out to you some days. I don't know how y'all do it. Me just managing my own life feels like a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm blessed to be in a field that can be very innovative. And if I had to say final thoughts about it is there's, there's so much innovation because you're never going to 100% understand the human psyche and the human brain because part of it is divine that um, God created each of us. So there's some element of what I do that comes in contact with that. So I love that. So I became a psychiatrist to help people. I became a psychiatrist because I had an epiphany. I stayed a psychiatrist because it was the perfect fit for me and fits my pur purpose so well. So that's what I got for you today. I just wanted to let you in on it. Um, and that gives you a little insight of why I am loving having this telepsychiatry practice, but I'm gonna tell you about it in a moment. So the first thing is, if you feel like anybody needs this, please tag them or share. If you're watching it later, no worries, hashtag replay. I am Dr. Erica, Harvard trained, double board certified psychiatrist and integrative lifestyle coach. I am on a mission to help women feel seen, valued and whole on their own terms, but I'm here no matter your gender. I'm here to help you find ways to get through all of this madness with your sanity intact and for us all to do this together. And one of the ways I do this not only is through these live streams and this education, is through my telepsychiatry practice, Goodwin Medical Associates. And what makes it special is me. You get access to me, all of my heart, all of this heart is totally trained on you. And the thing I love is I get a chance to do it on my own terms. And for me, a lot of my services all wrap around on your own terms. Because I wanted to practice medicine the way I wanted to practice medicine and not be frustrated with how the system isn't the way I want it. So you create your own system. Take the power back. So I took the power back and I created my own system and I created a telepsychiatry practice that is extremely customized. It is holistic. We look at a variety of things outside of medication. I see people for 90 minutes on the first evaluation to make sure we make it through everything and come up with a comprehensive plan and can be totally collaborative to come up with something that works for you. And it's telepsychiatry, so guess what? You can do it anywhere. No more getting stuck in traffic. No more wondering who's gonna see you in the waiting room. It's just the two of us. So I'm so happy to be able to do this. And right now I'm seeing adults, only adults. Kids will be later, but right now just adults. And I'm seeing people in Georgia and Tennessee, soon to be Massachusetts. Hopefully everything will come through. By the time I come through next week, I'll be like at Massachusetts. But um, if you are interested, you can get a free 15 minute consultation with me. No commitment. You just get to see if we're a good fit. Nothing to lose. Come on over if you're feeling overwhelmed, 
frustrated, like you just can't handle this anymore, like you're not functioning well, give me a holler. Come to AskDrGoodwin.com. That's AskDrGoodwin.com. And you can also get this information to anyone in your life that you feel like needs it. Because I'm dedicated and loyal to making sure people can have the life they need. And I can do that through these telepsychiatry practices. Let's see, Joy has one more comment. You'll never 100% understand the human brain because parts of it is divine. You're deep. Oh, thank you. You know, Spellman teaches you to be deep too. So I'm, I'm fortunate. I feel like I went to all the best places. <laughs> so thanks again for coming, Dr. Carol. Um, I have to give big ups to Dr. Carol. She helps keep my mind right. So, you know, all of us are on our journeys and we have to do what we have to do to take care of ourselves so we can give to others. And Dr. Carol helps me take care of myself so I can give to others. So, um, oh, Mr. Matos, thanks for hopping on. So I just wanted to um, give that all to you. I'll be back tomorrow, but tomorrow's Thursday, so I'll be in at seven and we'll see what we come up with. So sending you much love. Again, your prescription tonight is the same as your prescription every single day I give you, which is to call at least one person and tell them that you love them. You gotta get them on the line. You get to give them love. They get to give you love. Everyone's love bucket gets full. So just sending love, virtual hugs, take care and, and be kind to yourself.